rock, the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness seemed to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives way, he then is all my hope and stay. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other grounds is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand.
sand. Praise the Lord. Today, we shall have a brief period of scripture reading. The Acts of the Apostles. The Acts of the Apostles. Acts 28. Acts 28. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom, though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also which had diseases in the island came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laded us with such things as were necessary. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. And landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence, we fetched a compass and came to Regium. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came the next day to Puteoli, where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Appii Forum and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had aught to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of thee. But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets, from morning till evening. And some believed the things which were spoken, and some believed not. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed, after that Paul had spoken one word. Well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto this people, and say, Hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles, and that they will hear it. And when he had said these words, the Jews departed, and had great reasoning among themselves. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house, and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God, and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. The Epistle of Paul the Apostle to the Romans. Romans 1. Paul, a 
a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised afore by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, concerning his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead, by whom we have received grace and apostleship, for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom are ye also the called of Jesus Christ. To all that be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all, that your faith is spoken of throughout the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by any means now at length I might have a prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. For I long to see you, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift, to the end ye may be established. That is, that I may be comforted together with you by the mutual faith both of you and me. Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purposed to come unto you, but was let hitherto, that I might have some fruit among you also, even as among other Gentiles. I am debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the unwise. So, as much as in me is, I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are at Rome also. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to every one that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools, and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust one toward another, men with men working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who, knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. May God help us to be doers 
of the word. When I said that I would follow, it was with an honest heart. But I did not fully understand the cost. Who show us what it really means to carry the cross.
There will never be a reason to lose this confidence For I have learned where my assurance lies And the truth of this conviction makes me shout to the sky. I believe, I believe, yes, I believe, I believe. So I shout to the sky. Yes, I believe, I believe, we all that in me. Yes, I believe, oh, no Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ happening live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. Bonjour aujourd'hui. Good morning today. Ça va bien? How are you? Pas de problème. No problem. C'est le diable qui a un problème. Moi, me, yeah, the promise to deal. I have the promises of God. Good morning, everybody. Bonjour à tout le monde. How are you? Comment allez-vous? Any problem? No problem. The devil that has a problem. 
I have the promises of God. It's fulfilled today in your life. This is the last session of our leaders' professional meeting. You are going to be blessed before, beyond your expectation. Everything you are asking, everything you want to have, the Lord will add and multiply. Father, in Jesus' name, you are a great God. You are a loving God. You are a God of all possibilities. And you are going to do great things in every life, even today in Jesus' name. You will empower everyone. Energize everyone. Every mountain away, you clear away in Jesus' name. Bless us to go and bless other people. Let our ministries grow. Let our ministries multiply. And let the peace and the joy and the power of the Lord be in every life today. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. Today I come to a very familiar passage. I want to read some scriptures to you. And the scriptures you have read yourself. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 41. And I'm reading from verse 10. It says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Look at verse 11. In verse 11, behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. And they that strive with thee shall perish. In verse 12, it says, Thou shalt seek them and shall find them no more. Even them that contended with thee, that they that war against thee shall be nothing, shall be as nothing. And, and as a thing of naught, in verse 13, it says, For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. And then in verse 14, Fear not, thou warm Jacob. Jacob as an individual, fear not the warm Jacob. Jacob as a family, fear thou not Jacob. And fear thou not all men of Israel. Again, I will help thee, says the Lord, and thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. In verse 15, Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small. And thou shalt make the hills a child. And then in verse 15, in verse 16, it tells us in verse 16, Thou shalt find them, and the wind shall carry your enemies away. 
and the world we shall scatter them and thou shalt rejoice 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 in the lord and shall glory in the holy one of israel those are the verses we're looking at today let me tell you something here in those seven verses we have read we find fear not three times look at verse 10 fear thou not for i am with thee look at verse 13 fear not i will help thee and look at verse 14 and verse 15 fear not thou warm jacob i will make thee he says fear not i'm going to help you he actually mentions help 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 a number of times he says fear not i the almighty i am with you he says fear not although you are warm i will recreate you transform you you'll become a weapon somebody is so weak as weak as a worm something that you know if uh, you step on that thing with your boot you crush the worm but you say so will not remain a worm you become a weapon in the hand of the almighty god yesterday is gone Yes, a day, and you, you know, last time your past is like a worm. Today, we're passing through the creative machine of the Almighty God, and by the time you cross over to tomorrow, you'll be a weapon in the hand of the Lord. I'm talking to you on the wonder of worms transformed to weapons. That will be a wonder by itself. You will become a wonder. Other people will say, come, come and see something. I saw wonder. What is that? Just come. And then they come to you. He says, look at him. He was a worm. He's now a weapon. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the present promise conveyed to his obedient people. Number two, the proud people confounded by omnipotent potentiate. Potentate. Number three, powerless pilgrims converted to overcoming possessors. Let's look at number one. Number one, the present promise conveyed to his obedient people. Look at that again in Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10. It says, Fear thou not. That's what fear. That's what fear is common to almost everybody. Why do we fear? We have been crawling as an infant. Now we want to stand. It's a new experience. We fear. Eventually we're standing. We want to walk. As we're trying to walk without holding something, we fall down. We fear. 
as we're trying to walk, the place we're walking on, the land we're walking on is undulating, up, down, up, down. And because of that, we're jolted and we fall again to get to a new experience with fear. Whatever we have been doing in the past, we're comfortable, we're steady. As Moses was in the wilderness and was directing the animals and the sheep of Jethro, confident. Moses, come on, I want to give you a new assignment. I want you to go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. New experiences make us to fear. Oh Lord, send another person that's getting out of my comfort zone. I cannot do that. He feared. As the Lord is calling you to your new ministry, a new experience. There is fear. And that's the reason why God said, look at that, he said, fear thou not. What is fear? F-E-A-R in, in English. And when you write that out, faithless expectation activating restlessness. You have expectation. I will fail. I've never done that before. I cannot do a new thing. That problem is beyond me. That assignment is beyond me. That expectation is faithless. And it is the faithless expectation that activates restlessness and palpitation in your heart and you fear. But the Lord says, fear thou not. I am with thee. The work I'm telling you to do, I will assist you. I will help you. I will be with you. You will not be like an orphan that has no father. You know what we'll do? We'll come to a worship service. we we'll look up to God. And we'll pray a Father which art in heaven. After praying to our Father which art in heaven, we finish the service. We go out of the service. We live like an orphan. Our Father which art in heaven, we leave him in the church. We say bye-bye. The service has finished. Our Father which art in heaven, I'll come next Sunday again. I'll greet you and like honor you. Our Father which art in heaven. And then during the week outside the church building, we live like no father in heaven, no father on earth. We live like orphans. But he says, I, will, I am with thee. Be not confused and be not confounded and be not dismayed, for I am thy God. On Sunday, as we come to the service, we talk about our God. The God who opened the Red Sea. The God who gave manna to the children of Israel. The God who brought water out of the rock. We're powerful in the church. Now we close the service. And we go out. And we're fighting Satan every day and every night. We don't remember the presence of God. We are people of a double understanding, double mentality. 
Our mentality in the church, God is my God. Our mentality outside the church, God is not anywhere to be found. Satan is having in the rule and the control of life. He wants us to have the same knowledge, the same principle, the same faith we had in the church, have it in the world. It says, I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Fear is faithless expectation activating restlessness. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. It says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear thou not. He told um, Joshua while Moses was still alive. Whatever God says is permanent. Whether Moses is there or Moses is no more there. God says, Be strong and of a good courage. Fear not. He was telling him that, not just for that day in the wilderness, he was telling him that after they've left the wilderness and now they are on the enemy ground, and he says, fear not. What he tells you now, is for the time you get into the ministry and you go and we'll finish the conference and we'll finish everything here and you are now there in that same village, in that same town, in that same place of ministry. It continues, fear thou not. It says, not be afraid of them. Not be afraid of them. We human beings, whenever we are afraid, fear gives us a porous brain. We forget everything we have heard, everything we have learned, everything we have accepted, every promise we have made to God. Fear gives us a porous brain and the confidence we had and the acceptance we have made and the decisions we have made. When we become afraid, we forget all that. Our God who says He will help us. Our God who says He will strengthen us. Our God who says there is no problem you have that He will not solve. Fear makes us forget what we knew. It's like when I was a student, and other students were all along with me. Before the exam, we read and read and read. Confident. Now we get to the exam hall. We read the questions. We fear. We forget everything we learned, everything we had, everything we prepared for. Because of the fear, our brain became porous and forgetful. The people that succeed, it's not because they know more that we, than we know. It's because they didn't have fear. They didn't have any confusion. They remembered we had fear. We know the same thing. We can write the same thing. We can even teach that fellow the same thing. But he does not fear. He passes the exam. We fear. 
will fail the exam. He says, be not afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he, it is that go with thee. I understand now. The Jericho walls did not fall because Joshua and the people were strong. It's because the Lord, the creator, who can demolish any wall, went before them and demolished the walls before them. The Lord will go with you. Every wall that stands before you, God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, it will demolish every wall. It says, He will not fail thee. Look at the wall. Look at the demarcation. Look at the hindrance. Look at the enemy wanting to fight with all their weapons. And I am just a wall. They are fervent. They are ferocious. They have lion like kind of skill. And I am just a weapon in the hand of God. God will not fail. I say your God will not fail. Your God will lift you up. I think I'm the only one having problem. And I think the lion there wanting to eat me up, I think he doesn't have a, a problem. Those lions have problem too. The flies, small, small flies that irritate their eyes, you can get into their ear and that can uh, trouble them and make them feel confused. All those little, little flies are there and when the flies get to them, they'll have their problems they are trying to solve. And they cannot bite the fly. They cannot chew the fly. And the flies are over everywhere. My enemies have problems too. The Canaanites had problems, but they didn't have God. I have the presence of God. You have the presence of God. You have the power of God. You have the promise of God. You will overcome. And that's why it says, Fear thou not, be not afraid of them. Look at verse 7. In verse 7 it says, And Moses called unto Joshua and said unto him in the sight of all Israel be strong and of ego courage what am I telling you in the midst of all Israel what am I telling you today as you are hearing the word of God I'm telling you what God said what God said I should tell you he said, be strong. Where are you? And be of good courage. For thou must go with these people into the land which the Lord has sworn unto their fathers to give them, and thou shalt cause them to inherit it. You will inherit everything God has promised to in ministry. No fear. What if it does not happen? Uh -uh, God said it will happen. How can it not happen? Everything God said to your life will happen. Look at verse 8. 
in verse 8 and the Lord he it is that doth go before thee he will be with thee he will not fail thee neither forsake thee fear not look at that again fear not neither be dismayed Fear not. I didn't hear your answer. Look at Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. We have a great high priest. He's the one that made atonement for us. He's the one that saved us. He's the one that gave us duty, assignment, responsibility. He knows we are just once, but we become weapons in his hand. Knowing then, seeing them, believing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our profession. Whatever you see, whatever you hear, let us hold fast our profession. Whatever roaring lion actually is just, uh, you know, he roars like a lion, but he had been defeated at Calvary. Whatever you feel in your body, whatever you feel in your heart, uh, you know, our hands, our legs, our mind, uh, they already get into the habit. And the hand is used to doing something, it doesn't learn any new trick. The feet is used to walk in the same road, it doesn't take a new road. And the heart palpitates every time you hear a kind of sound, every time you hear something kind of news, naturally, normally, the heart is shifts to that and begins to palpitate. That's just habitual. And next time you hear the same sound. And the same reaction, palpitation of the attic will say, stop right there. This is a new day. I have the high priest with me all the time. I have the intercessor with me all the time. I have the God that cannot fail. That heart will stop palpitating. Fear becomes a habit. Anytime a problem like in the past showed up, the heart will begin the usual reaction, response, and begin to fear. Hold on there, my heart, that habit, change that habit. I have God, I have Christ, I have the great high priest. He is with me, he cannot fail, I cannot fail, you will not fail. Look at verse 15. It says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. You know, when we have a feeling of our old infirmity coming up, we are discouraged. We say, okay, I'm still like I was. No, you're not like you were. It's the internal organs reacting, responding like it always does habitually. We call it reflex action. But if you say, ah, uh ah, -uh, that's old response. Shape up, stand up, you are strong, you'll be strong. Yeah. <laughs> 
he was he was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin and then in verse 16 let us therefore come boldly look at that word boldly whenever we have trial we feel guilty you are not the originator of the trial whenever we have temptation we feel guilty we have not even responded to a temptation why should temptation come to me and we own the guilt that, be, that belongs to the tempter it's not my making it's not my doing the trial didn't come from me it came from another personality why should i carry his guilt the temptation didn't come from me it came from the tempter why should i carry their guilt and then we become fearful and feverish and anemic and people without any backbone. Why are you so weak today? I have temptation. Share up. It's not coming from, it came from them. They are the owner of the temptation and they should be the owner of their guilt and condemnation. <laughs> And so when the temptation comes, when the trial comes, I say, wait a minute. I'm important. I'm significant. That the devil would leave every other assignment and come to me and concentrate on me and give me trial and give me temptation. I'm important. I will show the devil that I have a God who is watching over me. I show the devil that I have God who is always with me, who will never leave me, who will never forsake me. I sh I'll show the devil I have resources which he doesn't know about. And therefore, I come boldly before the throne of grace. Temptation, trial, do not take grace from you. In the midst of the trial, in the midst of the discouragement, in the midst of the opposition, in the midst of the things you are going through, the throne of grace is available for you. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. That's why the word of God now says, fear not. Those words, fear not, I want to use the letters of fear not. Faithfully expect all resources, never objecting, trusting. So the Lord has said, fear not. I can be bold. I can stand firm. I can testify. I can look at the devil and say, all that you are doing is nothing. Faithfully, I expect all the resources of heaven, never objecting, only trusting. Your life will take on a new power. You, what defeated you before, let's forget about that. God has forgiven. Now you have a new life and a new prospect. You will overcome. Can I have a good amen? Look at point number two here. Point number two, the proud people confounded by the omnipotent, potent, 
stage. We are coming back to Isaiah chapter 41. And we are reading from verse 11. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. Do I believe that? Look at the promise of God. It says, all they that were incensed against thee, furious against thee, angry against thee, and they plotted against thee, all without exception. Do I believe that all scripture is given by inspiration and is profitable for me, for doctrine, for instruction in righteousness? Do I believe this, that God does not forget what he has said to me? And he said, behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. If I believe that, why am I afraid? If I believe that, why am I discouraged? If I believe that, why do I say they will finish me? If I believe that, why should I say I'm done? I'm conquered. I'm finished. That's wrong language. You will speak with new tongues. I said you will speak with new tongues. You know, new tongues. Uh, we're speaking. You know, we're speaking tongues. That's great. That's good. After we speak in new tongues for five minutes, ten minutes in our devotion, in our family devotion, in the church, in prayer, ten minutes, fifteen minutes speaking in tongues, the rest of the day we speak, I am unfortunate, I am poor, I am done, done, I am finished. Uh -uh. All that you speak now for one hour, for ten hours, they cancel every speaking in tongues you have done for 15 minutes. If I tell you, in my ignorance, you are defeated, and now I say that, it doesn't take one minute. If you tell yourself for the whole day, I am defeated, I am a failure, I cannot succeed, the problems are too much for me, I'm like an orphan. You tell yourself that for 24 hours or for your waking hours and your dreams did look like what you are talking about during the day. I only told you one minute and that doesn't, that doesn't matter. That doesn't do anything to you. It is what you tell yourself all through the day that's what defeats you. Don't mind what your neighbors tell you. They cannot be following you everywhere and saying the same bad, bad things. They say it for only one minute, only five minutes. Don't mind any text anybody sends you. The text, you read it within one minute and then you delete it, it's gone. It's what you do to yourself. Uh, uh, somebody said that about me. You go back to that text, you read it again. Then, you, how can they say this? You don't remember what Jesus has said to you. What God has said to you. 
and then you now begin to repeat it, inter internalize it in your life. What they said, what they wrote. You personalized it and you are now saying it to yourself every time. That is what brings weakness and defeat in our lives. But if you say all they that were incensed against me shall be ashamed. They'll be ashamed of their prophecy. They say you will fail. They'll be ashamed of that prophecy. They say you don't have any helper. They'll be ashamed of that prophecy. Who can stop the progress and the journey of the Almighty God? God said, I will go with you. I will be with you. He says, whatever you ask, I will give unto you. And God is there in faithfulness to his promise. And then you are detached from that promise. And you are afraid. No more fear. I said no more fear. What is fear? Look at this again. Forgetting eternal abiding reassurances. Anytime you are afraid, you are forgetting something. You are forgetting eternal abiding reassurances. It reassures you. I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. I will go through with you until the end. You cannot fear when you remember that every time. Fear is forgetting eternal abiding reassurances. Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. They fight against you. They war against you. And they don't have any gun. They don't have any cutlass. They don't have any, any knife. They come with a feather in their hand. The feather of uh, a chicken. And they come and they bring that feather. You look at them. You have God. You have the one that demolished the wall of Jericho. You have the one that opened the Red Sea. And these people come with feathers in their hand. And they say, I will kill you with this. <laughs> you laugh at their foolishness. You don't cry. You pity them. Nobody was nothing in his side will ever defeat you. When you call on the name of Jesus, all those people, they flee away defeated in Jesus' name. We fear because of the powerless people that have nothing. And they said they are going to destroy the ministry God gave from on high. It's impossible. With those reassurances God has given us. And he says those that were against us shall be as nothing as a sin of naught. I want to assure you, your God will never fail you. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, for I, 
that the Lord thy God will hold thy right hand. When somebody falls into the well and is at the bottom of the well and somebody wants to help and is on top and he puts his hand down he shouts, hold my hand. I am in the bottom of my hand. Cannot reach your hand. But God has a longer hand than the depth of any well. And he says, I will hold you with my right hand. There is no well, there is no dungeon, there is no valley in which you fall that the hand of God cannot reach you there. Again, it says, fear not, I will help thee. Your help has come. Your strength has come. Your victory has come. Fear not, I will help thee. Uh, look at Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2, verse 5. It tells us here, it says, For I, says the Lord, will be with her, will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. What if we read that to ourselves every day? What if we empty our hearts of what men say, of the fear they try to instill in us, and then we say these words of God every day? We say, preacher, that's my problem. Once those negative words enter into me, and I try to bring a positive word inside, it doesn't work. The negative theory means there all the time. God's word is greater than man's word. God's word is heavier than man's word. God's word will displace every word of man in your life. You know, I, there is a big drum. And he puts dirty water in it. I don't need the dirty water. I want the drum to be empty. I have some pebbles and sand I want to put in the drum. But the dirty water, uh, they, they fill the drum. I push the drum. The water will not flow out because I don't have the strength to push everything. What am I going to do now? Just bring the pebbles and the sand. And water is there, don't worry, and pour it inside. The heavy sand and the heavy pebbles you put inside, naturally, normally, will make the water inside that drum to flow out. Don't fight, don't fight the dirty water and the drum. Bring in pebbles and bring in sand. That dirty water will go off by itself. All those thoughts in the heart, I don't want them. Don't touch them, don't worry. Bring in the heavy word of God. The greater promise of God. Bring in the assurances of the Lord. All those things, just a matter of days, everything will vanish away. Fear 
is forgetting eternal abiding reassurances. Don't fear. The Lord is with you. And the word of God in your heart will drive away the word of man in your life. Deuteronomy chapter 33. I'm reading from verse 26. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 26. There is none like unto the God of Jeshurun, who rideth upon the heaven in thy hell, and in his excellency on the sky. Verse 27, it says, The eternal God is thy refuge. The eternal God is thy refuge. The everlasting, underneath thee are the everlasting arms. That's greater than any challenge we face. Underneath thee are the everlasting arms. He shall thrust out the enemy from before thee and shall say, destroy them. They will not destroy you. God will destroy them for you. He'll take all their evil, he'll throw that away, and if you pray for them, they will even be converted. Remember, anytime you fear, you're forgetting eternal abiding reassurances. Now it says, fear not. Again, as we look at the letters of that word, fear not. Fully embrace, acknowledged rights or redemption. New, open, total. If you fully embrace the proclamation of God, there's no way you'll be afraid again. If you acknowledge your right in Christ, no way that you'll be afraid again. Fully embrace, acknowledge redemption or rise, new, open, thorough, total. We're coming to point number three. Point number three, we're looking at the powerless pilgrims now converted to overpowering possessors. We're pilgrims on our way to the eternal city. We don't have any power of our own. So the people that look at us, and they look at our level of education, to them they ask, what part does he have? The people that look at us, and they look at our physical energy, it's already 45. It's already 57. And already old age is coming upon him, upon her. And he says he has a new vision, a new ministry, a new calling. At 57, at 63, what can he do? They look at us as if there's no power. Our time is gone. They, they even have a word for us. They say, how old are you now? <laughs> you say, I'm 43. They say, madam, how old are you now? I am 54. And what do you want to do now? God is calling me. I will overcome. <laughs> they say, you know what? 
a fool at 40 is a fool forever. Then you wake up and you say, I'm 43. I am 54. Whatever I had not done before the age of 40, before the age of 40, and I am this old, I accept what you say. Every time you say yes to a man, a woman of the world, you say no to God. Every time you say yes to a lie, you say no to the truth of God. Every time you say, oh yes, I remember now, I am this age, and a fool at 40, and a powerless man at 40, and a, vision, a, a visionless man at 40, is a visionless man forever. Once you accept the sayings of men, you are going to forget, and you are going to negate the sayings of God. <laughs> When somebody comes to me and he brings a word, I say, my friend, you're too late. Already God spoke to me. I said yes to God. I embrace what God has said. I believe what God has said. I'm walking on what God has said. I'm laying the foundation of fulfillment already. I have said yes to God. I can only say no to you. Take the word of God with you everywhere you go. In the kingdom of God, there is no fool at 40. In the kingdom of God, there is no fool at 60. In the kingdom of God, there is no fool at 80. God called Moses to this new ministry at the age of 80. You are not a failure. Failure is cancelled from your dictionary. The power of God is with you. The promise of God is with you. Let's go to Quran. Do you believe it is done in your life, in your ministry, in your work, in your profession? It is done in Jesus' name. Now, he tells us in chapter 41, verse 14. He says, fear not thou warm Jacob, and ye men of Israel, again, I will help you, says the Lord, and the Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Look at verse 15. In verse 15, behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. I will make you a new instrument, a new sharp instrument, a new sharp threshing instrument having teeth. At 80, all the teeth are gone, but I'll give you new teeth. Have you, have you seen those machines? Have you seen the edges around the circle? Have you seen another circle having all those edges? And then as they are rolling and rolling, then they are able to move the machinery. When those edges are now kind of rounded and they are so old and they are worn out, they don't move very well. 
and they cannot move the um, the machine anymore. God says, all those edges that are now rounded off and not working, I'll make them new. In your life, the things that were working before, and they are no more working for whatever reason, you preach, you quote the word, they are no more working for whatever reason. You mention the name of Jesus and it doesn't work for you for whatever you sin. The Lord said, bring that machine. Bring yourself to me. I will remake you. I will reform you. I will refashion you. I will make you a new, sharp, threshing instrument having teeth. Thou shalt thresh the mountains. Look at yourself. Look at your stature. Look at this mountain. Before this time, you will go around and avoid the mountain. You will avoid that challenge. You will walk a long distance to go around the mountain. By the time you stop, by the time you end going around that large and big and high mountain, it's night already. There's no chance for ministry again. From today, you will not walk that long journey. You're still the warm. Humanly speaking, you're still powerless. From experience, you're powerless. But now the Almighty indwells you. The creator of all mountains now dwells with you. You will speak to that mountain. That mountain will vanish away. Every hill before you, every difficulty before you, every hindrance before you, this new threshing instrument will thrash them and thresh them. You have become an overcomer. Say, I have become an overcomer. The powerless pilgrims converted to overpowering possessors. Hey, look at uh, verse 16 there. In verse 16, and thou shalt find them. You sweep them off. They thought they will sweep you off. They don't have the promise of God to do that. They don't have the power of God to do that. They don't have the agreement of God to do that. But you have the promise and the presence and the power of the Lord to do this. You'll wipe them off. Thou shalt find them and the wind shall carry them away. And the wild wind shall scatter them. Scatter them. When the children of Israel were, were going in the wilderness, and they knew that all those enemies were there to even hinder them and stop them before they enter the land of Canaan. And the pillar of, the, of, pillar of cloud and pillar of fire rises up and they're ready to move. And they fold up their tents and they're ready to go on. They will say, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered. As we are going uh, into the ministry, as we are going to do the work the Lord has given you to do, the Lord will arise for you. All those enemies that want to hinder or stop you will be scattered. It says the one wind will scatter them. 
and thou shalt rejoice in the Lord and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. How can we fear with all this that God has said? What is fear? Fear is finished enemies appearing restless. Already they are finished. All those people behind the wall of Jericho, they were restless, they were reckless, and yet they have been finished. Whatever God has called you to do, you will do. Fear is finished, enemies appearing restless or reckless. They are finished already. Your sickness is finished. Your disease is finished. Your poverty finished. And your palpitation of heart finished. And the recklessness of the enemy finished. Whenever, if you're a farmer, and you see a snake, and you caught the head, the body will be wriggling violently. But it can do no harm anymore. The head is cut off. Jesus has bruised the head any the head of the old serpent although the body is still wriggling and appearing restless and, and uh, reckless finished your problem finished the thing that used to make you afraid finished it's now time to arise and walk. It's now time to say, now I've got the weapon, I've gotten the power. There is no fear anymore. And so the Lord is telling you, fear not. Tell your brother, your sister there, fear not. Say that. Tell him. Don't look down. Look at his face. Fear not. Fear not. This is it. Finally exhibiting anointed royalty, nobly ordaining triumph. Now you have anointing. Now you have royalty. Now you have power. Now you have reassurance. Finally now, exhibit that everywhere you go. I'm anointed. Where are you? I am anointed. Goliath will sense that anointing your heart. All the enemies of your progress will say that anointing your heart. Remember, don't leave the word you have heard on your seat there when you are going out. All the word you have heard, take them, put in your heart. You have a heavenly father. When you go out there, don't live like an orphan. I possess. And now let the weak say, Here you are strong. There you are strong. Inside the church you are strong. Outside the church you are strong. No evil man will be able to stand before you all the days of your life. Arise. Arise. And let your enemies be scattered. Open your mouth now and pray to the Lord. Nothing to fear. No fear. No fear. You are an overcomer. Open your mouth and pray. And say, Lord, I accept. I embrace. I believe. 
It's all mine.